Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am Dr. Emmanuel Babatunde Ajala, the Librarian of Glorious Vision University at Ogwa in Edo State. I am here this morning to present to you or to discuss with you uh, another very important part of this program and uh, that is best practices for creating a successful hybrid learning community in the library. That is the topic given to me that we are going to discuss together. I believe that uh, my yesterday's uh, lecture will be brought to you, the video will be given to you live and uh, I believe uh, if you have any questions you will prepare it and uh, I'll be ready to answer some of your questions if God permit us to have a good access this uh, today. Uh, then concerning this video also, I will want you to uh, pen down your questions and uh, by, the, by God's grace, I will be ready to, ask, uh, to answer some of your questions. Well, we are going to best practices for creating a successful hybrid learning community in the library. Well, let me quickly point out to you that uh, library has been uh, involved in assisted learning. Learning is not only limited to the classroom. And uh, when you involve actively the use of a functional library in any institution, it assists the teachers or the lecturers or the teachers on uh, what and what they need to drive home their lectures in the classroom. Well, uh, what we normally say is that library has been given assisted learning to students. And uh, this we now leverage on the uh, the geographical formation of the library of each of the institution. It's not only one man, uh, one room apartment where you just have tables and chairs and uh, some stack of shelves of books. Well, a modern library now involves uh, an electronic library in which you can involve yourself in virtual learning and the uh, student can have access to some of the virtual educational resources. Some of these initiative has given back to what we refer to as library commons, which I mentioned in my last lecture. But before I go into that, uh, I want us to quickly look into what is hybrid learning. Hybrid learning is a group synchronous learning that helps to teach both in-person and online learners. Both in-person and online learners. Which means that uh, when you introduce online learning to face-to-face -face learning, you are bringing in or you are creating an hybrid uh, learning. And hybrid learning has been practiced in many parts of the world before COVID. It was when COVID came to uh, the world that countries like Nigeria and some few other African countries now keen into the importance of hybrid learning. Because, because of COVID, many of us cannot reach our students and we have to teach them learning should not stop because of COVID and people started to devise uh, and make use of the potentials of IT in order to reach out to their students and to make learning a continuous one. And in an attempt to do this, we bring in face-to-face -face students who can gather in some little area. Then we add in some IT infrastructures so that those who cannot uh, uh, participate in the face-to-face -face can either use their uh, phone or use their mobile 
uh, uh, technology to link up with the lecturers. Now, uh, educators also teach remote and uh, in-person students at the same time using tools like video conferencing. We have uh, something like Zoom. We have uh, Google Meet and many, many others, which has been developed for the use of uh, hybrid learners. Then we have some hardware and some software that we use to create a gadget for such type of learning. And uh, in some cases, it may include asynchronous learning. And this asynchronous learning has to do with creating a video. And uh, you don't bring in a face to face, you just create a video and you send the video to your student and your, video, uh, your student watch the video. After watching the video, they learn some things and they prepare their questions and either send the, que uh, the questions to you through email or through uh, video conferencing. This is very, very important, uh, especially in learning. After COVID, you will discover that people have seen the importance of hybrid learning and they are now every, every facet of academic areas of the life of our students have now uh, seen the importance of using hybrid system to teach their students. For example, some of the secondary schools now use hybrid teaching in our universities. We, uh, uh, we lecture through uh, Zoom and uh, uh, there are times when you will gather some students together and you will also add uh, some online materials so that uh, uh, those who are not in class or those who are in distance area can also join in the class. The, what am I saying? The classroom is now becoming virtual bit by bit, which means you can now teach in a remote area. Geography, geographical band is now being removed from teaching and this is a development. What are the characteristics of hybrid learning for me to move quickly. Hybrid learning helps in flexible teaching and learning. And what I'm, do I mean by flexible teaching? You are able to bring in a lot of uh, animation into your teaching. And uh, whether you are in the classroom or you are not in the classroom, people will be able to see what you are projecting. You can show them a video chart, and some other things. Then it opens to more types of learners. We have people who can sit down quietly and listen to teachers. There are some of our students that are not opportune to be in, in that particular environment. So those types can also benefit. We have some of our workers who are still learning, learning while on the work. So some of our workers still participate in the classroom, even while they are working. We uh, also, we discovered that uh, hybrid learning uh, help us in the optimization of the educational technology equipment. And uh, we are able to optimize some of our educational technology equipment in hybrid learning. Then uh, hybrid learning, is also student-centered. We, we are able to create a student-centered community in which many of our students, maybe from remote area, can also participate, tell us their experience, answer questions, and also do assignments. Then both online and in-person classes enjoy the benefit of sharing knowledge from their teachers. This is very, very important. It's a these are the characteristics of a hybrid learning. Uh, you, you, you are able to present your lecture in such a way that not only those who are in the classroom can benefit, those who are outside the classroom. If we have even students that are sick, that are in the hospital, uh, or maybe in a, 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 a health center, they can also participate in the lecture and they are not losing. This is the benefit of a 
hybrid learning. Now, one of the very important uh, uh, assistance of the library in hybrid learning is the creation of library commons. Library commons are not too uh, uh, popular uh, in Nigerian uh, K-12 schools. What we mean by K-12 is what I mean. Well, when I was uh, giving the last lecture, I talk about K-12 school, which many of us refer to as secondary schools here. In some other countries, they refer to them as K-12, and in some others, they refer to them as high school or maybe some other names. But in Nigeria, we are not too conversant with library commons. Library commons is a development from the library to assist the lecturer in hybrid learning. And uh, library common is uh, an allocated practice at library to spark collaborative learning. That's what I put down here. I say library common is an allocated practice at all uh, Barai libraries to spark collaboration uh, or collaborative learning. Uh, in every standard library now, outside Nigeria and in some part of Nigeria now, library is developed in such a way that they have what we call a section that is referred to as library commons. The importance of library commons is uh, purely a, a, a space that is separated not as a serene place like the main reading area of the library, but we encap encapsulate a section where students can discuss, they can talk to each other. It's not a place where you keep quiet, but you have a, a, a chance to discuss with your colleagues, to share your knowledge with them, and at the same time, to have a feedback from your colleagues. And such a library common is separated from the main reading area of the main library. And this is a, uh, a new development that is gaining ground in all our libraries all over the world. What are the benefits of library commons? It facilitates equal relationship that generates collaboration. When students learn something from the class and they have a place where they can have what people traditionally refer to as group discussion and you are able to sit down and share your knowledge with your colleagues and you are able to ask questions and you are able to also answer some of your colleagues that are not properly uh, uh, that do not properly understood what you know and this is uh, a place where we call it uh, uh, where people uh, students come together to do what we call assistive learning assistive learning is when you and your colleagues sit down together and you are able to teach each other not your teacher teaching you this time around but you and your 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 colleagues you are able to talk you are able to discuss now most of the time when teachers teaches in the class student whether they understand or they don't understand they keep quiet many inquisitive students can ask questions but some will never ask questions especially at the secondary school level if it is in the university some students can ask questions and the teacher will be able to get himself convinced or assess his teaching method. In some secondary school, the only way you, uh, you, you, you know that you have delivered is when you give them exam or test. But when this uh, library commons came up, they, we discovered that there are times when students will sit down and they will listen to lectures, but they don't understand what the teacher is talking about until they come out and meet with their colleagues 
and their colleagues will re-explain what has been taught in the class to them and they will know that they've not understood what the teacher was talking about. And when they are free enough to ask questions, in library commons, you can ask foolish questions. And foolish questions is, is allowed, is, is accommodated. And you can talk, you can laugh, you can also bring in your ideas. And though it is moderated, at times, most of the times, we have a senior colleague who will be around to moderate what you are doing. But at the same time, it's not a stringent environment as the classroom environment. So we create uh, what we call library commons. Also, library commons guarantee that education can happen outside the classroom. It's not only in the classroom that you can learn. You can also learn outside the classroom. And library has provided such an environment for you to come together and learn outside the classroom. We also have what we call the enable student uh, management environment. That is library commons enable students to manage self-directed learning. Self-directed learning, as I've said, is when you and your colleagues are teaching yourself or teaching each other what the teachers talked about. Many a times, on some little, little occasion, at times teachers may be wrong. Maybe that is strange to you. There are times when you are looking at what you are being taught, you go back like uh, what the Bible says, Berean Christians. They don't just accept things hook, line, and sinker. They go back to find out whether what they have heard is true. And they have a research mind, an inquisitive mind. Many of our students today don't have inquisitive mind. What the teacher tells them is what they know. They don't leverage on what the teacher tells them to inquire more on what the teacher has said. The teacher said when you put water on fire, it turns into air. Is it true? Is it correct? Many students will go a step further to go and practicalize it. And when they do, they discover that the water dried up. Where has that water gone to? Those are things that I believe students can start to ask themselves. The teacher tells you in chemistry that the water becomes vapor. Is it correct? Is it true? It is when you start to practicalize and you discuss with your colleagues that you start to know that uh, uh, what the teacher has said is perfect and is correct. Then, in library commons, you are able to occasionally discuss your practicality with each other and able to say that what the teacher has said is correct. Then, the library commons provide an environment for interactive discussion which enable uh, IT resources to be used properly. Well, IT resources is provided in library commons, like microphone, usage of uh, video, usage of uh, computer system, usage of even television. There are times when you involve television in your interactive teaching. Uh, take, for example, if you are talking about uh, 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 media presentation, you can look at how the journalists present their news in the media. And this is also a, 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 an assistive learning. And it helps the students a lot when they come to the library uh, or the library commons. Now, let's also look at the benefit of a, a hybrid uh, learning models. Hybrid learning model that we are talking about because uh, library common is just an instrument of hybrid learning model. And uh, the benefits of hybrid learn learning model in which library commons is an instrument uh, brings flexible learning uh, experience. Hybrid uh, learning method or model brings flexible learning 
uh, experience. Uh, it uh, brings synchronous communication opportunities in which face-to-face uh, -face and the online discussion is allowed. And this is what we refer to as synchronous communication. People online can talk. You that are sitting down in the classroom can also talk. We can see you and they can also see you. Uh, you can also see them online. Then, uh, matching the immediacy and the intimacy of in-person academic discussion uh, or making it uh, meaningful. And uh, what I'm saying here is that the in-person, those that are sitting, what they are saying becomes meaningful. And those online, what they are talking about is also becoming meaningful when they exchange ideas together. Then freedom of independent academic exploration is also uh, part of the benefit of hybrid learning and flexibility to access and use library or assisted materials that are embedded inside the library. You know, when you are using library commons in your hybrid learning model, you discover that it is very easy for you to use some of the materials that are inside the library in your, uh, um, uh, your, your uh, hybrid learning uh, environment. Now, there are more efficient use of resources, online inclusions, which helps efficient optimization of resources. We have a uh, more efficient use of resources, especially the online ones, like the video, the internet, the website, and all the rest. All these are involved in hybrid learning. Now, let me go straight to how to create a successful hybrid learning environment. Number one, set your goals. It's very important to have a goal. Even in library commons, when we are trying to create a hybrid environment in library commons the first thing is what is the goal of the of the discussion if you are coming if students are coming to discuss they have a goal if they don't have a goal they will come around and mess up the whole discussion there will be noise there will be irrelevant talking there will be relevant discussion which is not allowed in library commons what we do is to set a goal uh, what do you want to accomplish with your hybrid class. That's the first thing. The second thing is to match, uh, to map your class out properly with effective access to the students and teachers to carry the face-to-face -face and online student. Map your class out properly. Map it out in such a way that uh, there will be proper and effective access to each other, both the, the, the teachers and the students in hybrid learning. If your class is not properly mapped out, there will be a lot of disruptions. The next one is making sure that there, there is a, what we call synchronous group brainstorming session. Synchronous group brainstorming section is when the online and the face-to-face -face people are able to have access to each other they can see each other they can talk to each other the communication will be better it's when you see people and you see their face even when you are talking to some people their gesticulation also pass a message to you so in such a synchronous uh, communication you are able to pass something out and you are able to get something from your colleagues. Then communication, communicating class expectation and individual responsibility is also taken into account. Uh, when you are communicating to the face-to-face -face people, you consider them very well. Then at the same time, you consider the online students, those that are not sit down in your front. Now, what do you consider about those that are online? You, if you are a good teacher, 
you will watch whether such students are busy doing something else and they are not participating in the class. They are only showing, uh, uh, they are only showing a proof that they are in the class, but they are not in the class. Imagine somebody that is driving and is attending a class. The, the person can be driving and attend properly, whereas the person can be driving and may not be attending, and you will think they are in the class. There are some students like that who will uh, participate in the hybrid class, but they are doing something, they may be cooking, they may be eating, they may be doing something else, some are with somebody else doing something else. You, you as a teacher should be able to monitor during the hybrid class whether the students are really participating or they are not. And this is very important. Then you have to establish a collaborative, trust-based learning environment. Uh, I, I think I've belabored that. Collaborative in the sense that those online and those that are face-to-face they are able to see each other, talk to each other, and collaborate. And teacher should be the moderator. And, and, and I think this is also part of the planning when you are creating your hybrid uh, class. Then we have to talk about call and response presentations. That is what we call call and response. There are times when the teacher put up a call to the student. Then what is the response time of those online is very, very important. This, uh, then we also talk about uh, providing immediate feedback to students. At times, the students also give their own call to teachers, especially when they are asking questions. The feedback must be immediate and the response must be immediate. This helps in the hybrid class very well. Uh, another very important uh, point in the preparation of hybrid learning environment is to determine the course objective. What is the objective of the course or the discussion? And uh, the objective must be properly stated and you must continue to follow the objective as you are learning. The hybrid class can make you to lose the trend of the objective if you are not careful because there are a lot of uh, that there can be distractions then determine online portion of your course including uh, group discussion virtual assignment virtual examination and grading system before you start the hybrid class you must be able to determine the online grading system and that is what we refer to as the assessment of your class how do you uh, in in an in an hybrid class how do you assess your student this is properly discussed and is properly plan, planned out in some in some places they use multiple choice for online assessment because you can easily assess the face to face but what about the online uh, a lot of uh, 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 school of thought have sat down to discuss about how do we assess uh, the hybrid classroom? How do we assess students? This is a very big discussion and uh, you have to determine your assessment method before you start the lecture at all. Then uh, you have to uh, create and source your content of time making, making sure it fits your audience, time, syllabus, and convenience. Create and source your content on time. Create and source your content on time. What are your content? That is the text of your lecture. Those are your content. You have to create it on time. You have to allocate time to your content your lecture must have time frame you don't give a lecture unlimited lecture unlimited lecture is boring to student and therefore you must create your content you must create your time and then uh, making sure it fits your audience the audience 
or the student you are talking to is can uh, is your content fitting them then the time frame are you making sure that uh, your co your content has a time frame in library commons uh, time is very very important you can't afford to waste time because most of your IT equipment you are using at times they may restrict uh, your lecture to time and this is very very important then make sure you give all your preparation a trial run and don't be afraid to redesign there must be a trial run of your hybrid lecture before you even start the lecture at all if you don't give it a trial run you will run into problem of a uh, uh, maybe errors mistakes and if you, if you are using video or you are using zoom time frame may not uh, uh, accommodate you trying to redesign during lecture you don't redesign during lecture you redesign before the lecture and this is very very important and these are some of the things that you do to create a successful hybrid environment uh, or hybrid learning environment i want to uh, let you know that uh, hybrid learning environment is becoming very important not only in the university system but also in the secondary and even in primary uh, this is being included in the system of teaching system or methods of teaching and it is now being very acceptable now let me quickly uh, give one or two advice to our teachers i believe we need to upgrade our teaching method and uh, align to this 21st century opportunities to make sure that our students get the best from us now to the school proprietors let me please plead with you the uh, the importance of good education today carries libraries along and your library determines the quality of education that you present to the student please let's improve our library get the modern day equipment let these children of ours in this century also enjoy the potential of IT and I believe by God's grace we will have the best from them in the future. Thank you for listening.